right, welcome everyone. Welcome to uh, Adobe Lightroom Live. Um, we're here streaming today and it's uh, going to be a fun time taking a look at how you can take advantage of a module that many of you may have just forsaken if you don't do your own printing. And that, of course, is the print module. But I'm going to show you ways to use the print module that you may not have thought of and it doesn't really even require you to own a printer. Uh, I used to do my own printing years ago and I just don't anymore because it's easier to go to a, um, a print lab to get the printing done. And even if you're using a print lab, I'm going to show you how to use the print module in ways to make it, uh, to make it easier for you. So welcome everyone in the chat. If I don't give you, give a, give you a personal shout out, that is by no means uh, any oversight on my part. It's just I got to keep this stream pretty short. So uh, I see Jan, I see Victoria, I see uh, David and a few other folks in there. Alex, welcome everyone from around the world. And today let's go ahead and have some fun in Lightroom. So um, the features I'm going to show you, of course, work in Lightroom CC, but they some many of these will work in previous versions of Lightroom too. So if you happen to be on an older version, you haven't made that switch yet, which you should, um, you'll still be able to take advantage of what you see today. So let me go ahead, without further ado, since I'm limited on time today, to jump right in and show you what we're going to do today. And Mary, I see you as well. Hello. All right, so I'm going to pop over to Lightroom. And as you can see, I've got Lightroom CC open. I've got a collection open of some of my favorite travel photos. Travel photos always make good photos for demos because uh, they're pictures that I've taken from all over the world. Um, but what I want to do is uh, spend a little time of just talking about the relationship between the collection and the print module. So as you know, in Lightroom, you can go in and you can select um, one or more photos. So for example, let's say I scroll down to my Hong Kong photos. I don't know what put me in the mind of Hong Kong today. I got a package coming from China. So right now it's in Hong Kong. I guess that's what made me think of it. Um, and of course I can select multiple photos just by holding down my shift key. Or if I want to do a discontinuous selection, I can hold down on the Mac, the command key and on Windows, the control key to skip photos that I don't want to select. The reason I'm pointing this out is because this is going to be important in the next step. So let's say that I want to go ahead and select all four of these from Hong Kong. And I'm going to switch over to the print module. Well, by default, if you haven't made any changes or haven't visited the print module, chances are it's going to show you, even though you have multiple photos selected, it's going to show you the one photo that was first selected or most selected. Now at the very bottom here, um, which is, okay, I'm not covering it, good. At the very bottom here, let me zoom in and show it to you. You've got the ability to either use, which I recommend, the selected photos, all the film strip photos, or the photos that are flagged. So selected photos is easy because then you just select the ones you want to use for the print module or the slideshow module or the book module or whatever it is. And of course, if I didn't do anything, what it would print right now is this one picture on this one page, and it would print this picture on this page, and this picture on this, you get the idea. All right, so um, that is like printing 101, you know, print a page per picture. Lightroom can do so much more when, it talk, when we talk about printing. And again, even if you don't own a printer, this is going to be helpful for you. So for example, um, in the upper right hand corner, you'll notice in the print module, you've got the ability to do a single image or and or contact sheet. That's the one we're going to be dealing with the most today. You can do a picture package or you can even build your own custom package. So let me show you the difference between uh, a single image versus the picture package. The picture package does this. It allows you to specify multiple images up on the page for just that. You want to print out a sheet of paper, but you don't want to waste the whole sheet of paper on one image. And maybe you want to make some five by seven, some wallet sizes, an eight by 10, whatever it is. That's what the picture package is. Remember back in the day when you got your school pictures and you could cut them out, or maybe even that's still today, I don't know. But anyway, you could uh, make a picture package that way. And you can build your own picture package uh, just by going here. So if I say clear the layout, I can say, oh, you know what? I want a four by six and I want uh, some two by two and a half quarters and I want some two by two and three, two and three point five. And I don't have room for another four by six. So what does it do? It creates another page and I want a five by seven and I want an eight by 10. 
And notice what it's doing. It's giving me all the pages I'll need for all of those different print sizes. And it's giving me, uh, if I go ahead and add some more, it's not going to waste any paper. It will let me use all the paper that it can systematically put these on. And that's great. Okay, so that's print module 101. Now let's get to the task at hand. Let's get to what we're going to do today. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and click auto layout there. Let's clear this layout. Let's do, let's do that. Okay. So um, you notice on the left-hand side, your template browser. Well, in Lightroom, you've already got some templates there. So for example, these are pretty much like I just specified. Um, we're going to not use these. We're going to use our own to make up our own, not only print, but social media templates. So I've got a folder here. There's also a folder called user templates, but you can um, put them either in the user templates folder or you can make your own. So first and foremost, how do we do this? First and foremost, get out of picture package. Go back to single image. Um, next, you can then specify whether or not it will um, zoom to fill or rotate to fit. That will make more sense to you in a second. The other thing you have to think about is what size paper you're gonna put this on. So let's say we were doing this for standard social media and we want it to print or put up all four of those images on a social media post and um, well let's go with that for now so what I would do is I could come down here in the um, in the cell I'm sorry the page grid this area down here in the bottom or right panel and you notice I get rows and columns well since I have four images I could say give me two rows and two columns and it will automatically lay those images out for me. Now again, it's automatically rotating because I told it to rotate to fit. If I turn off the rotate to fit, then it won't rotate. So that's what the rotate to fit does. And the zoom to fill says, I will zoom to fill those grids so that you don't have all this white space left over. Okay, that's cool. Now you also notice that, well, the margins are there. Maybe I want these images to go all the way out to the edges. So what I'm, going to, what I'm going to invite you to do is these are based on whatever printer you may have or you may have had selected or your default print settings. So therefore, it's going to leave some margin area because most printers don't print to the edge of the paper. Photo printers do, but most desktop office type printers don't. So let's forget that. Let's go to our page setup and let's say, you know what? I don't want to use any of these built-in ones. I'm going to go to um, any printer. Actually, I'm going to go to paper size. There we go. I'm going to go to paper size, and I'm going to say manage custom sizes. This will give me the ability to specify any size paper I want because I'm not going to print this. I'm, I don't have a printer here. I'm not worried about a printer. I don't have to be constrained by any um, print size, by a piece of hardware. I can make up anything I want, and especially for social media, I can make up anything I want. So for example, let's say that I wanna make a square document. I wanna make a 10 inch by 10 inch document, and I don't want any margins, just make the margin zero. So when I, um, oh, sorry, I was making changes to the other one. Let's make a new one first, there we go. And now let's make it 10 by 10. And now we're gonna say no margin, zero, 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 zero. And that will give you your untitled one. You can click on the untitled and you can make it whatever you want, 10 by 10. All right, so now that I got my new paper size, 10 by 10, and I, now it's selected, I can click OK, and that will make a square image. Now, it doesn't take away the margins that were already there because they were already there. But now I can go ahead and scoot those out and say that, hey, I want this to go all the way to the edge. And for the cell spacing, I don't want any cell spacing. Now, if the images aren't quite positioned or oriented the way you want them in the squares, like I don't like the way it's cutting off this boat, you can just pick it up and move it over because you're designing this to look the way you want it to look for whatever it is you're gonna put this out as. Okay, so great. I've got my 10 by 10 square with four images ready to go. And I don't want to ever have to do this from scratch again. So that's where the templates come in. If I go in and say, give me a new uh, template based on what I've just done here, 
It will allow me to create a preset, save it to whatever folder I want. So I'm going to say 10 by 10, 4 up, because that's what this is. So now when I create my 10 by 10, 4 up, what can I do with it? I don't have a printer, so what are my choices? If you scroll down to the print module in the, in the bottom there, normally it's on print to a printer. I don't have a printer, but luckily, if you change it from print to a printer to print to a JPEG file, now you can output anything you've done in Lightroom to a JPEG. So you can say whatever resolution you want it to be, whatever JPEG quality you want it to be, whatever uh, color space you want it to be in. I recommend if you're going to post it, post it on social media to make it sRGB. You can um, make it perceptual um, or perceptual, there we go, or relative. And uh, you can add any print sharpening or anything you want. So I'm going to leave it the way it is, and I'm going to say print to file. Now that will just simply ask me, where do you want to save your JPEG? I want to save it out to the desktop. I'm going to call it Hong Kong um, for up. And that will make a JPEG out on my desktop from those four, fo four photos using the print module. Something the export doesn't do. You can't combine multiple photos like this together. Now that I've done this, um, and I, I can let that cook while we're doing it, I'm going to show you some of my other templates. So for example, I've got one here that's um, three up wide. And notice I've used my identity plate at the bottom. That's right. You can add in a custom identity plate as well as, if I go down here and show it to you, you can add your custom identity plate as well as choosing your paper or background color. Since you're not printing the paper, you can waste all that black ink to your digital file that you want. So you can make the background whatever you want. You can put cell spacing between them so that they're not touching each other. You can use uh, any custom setup you want. So for example, um, here's a six up, so I don't have six photos selected. I would need to go pick two more, and it would put those two up, make me a nice gallery print or a nice gallery image for my portfolio. So you can do all kinds of cool templates and just save them, select whatever photos you want to use. So if I don't want to use those, now that I'm in the film strip, I can say, you know what? I want that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one, and lastly, that one and just choose any six I want. And if I want to tweak just this one, I can tweak it any, any way that I want. So if I don't want so much space on the bottom, I can have less space on the bottom, move that photo over, move that photo over a little bit, move this one over a little bit, and get these just the way I want them to be, and then export out my, um, print, my JPEG image. So very cool things you can do with the print module, even if you've never, ever printed before, or you're never going to print to a physical printer. Now, of course, the other reason that you can export to a JPEG is I could share that image that I just exported a minute ago, the four images up for Hong Kong. I can share that out on social media. Or if I do make a print size, like a, I have some here, um, I have a five by seven, I have an 11 by 14, so forth and so on, then I can send those out to a lab to have printed. So I, I, I print at Costco. So I could print at Costco, uh, send that over, and have some great prints that I could put up on the wall. So for example, some of my older um, styles were, I had like a 20 by 16 studio print that would actually have a nice black border around it. And it would even put my little logo, my stamp in the lower left-hand corner. So as you walk down the hall of my studio, you would see all my prints up on the wall. Um, and of course, I've done 30 by 20 canvases that don't have any border. They just fill the canvas area. And um, you can just have a ball with all of these templates that you can create. So you're only limited by your imagination when it comes to these. Uh, let's see, here's an 11 by 6, or I'm sorry, 14 by 11, 6 up. Um, just all, just I randomly create templates as I need them and then save them. So. Take a look at the print module. If you've not looked at the print module lately, you can do a lot with it. Now let's go back out to the desktop here where that Hong Kong image is, and there it is. So there's the JPEG that I exported earlier, ready for posting or sending out to be printed. Um, and there are companies that will print a square image for you. So um, away you go. 
All right, let me check the chat real quick before I say goodbye. Make sure there are no burning questions there. I see some hellos. Hello, India. Hello, Venezuela. Hello, Ireland. Dave Clayton's in the house. Are your templates available? I haven't made my templates available because I haven't cleaned them up. Um, I guess I could make them available for download. I'd have to clean up a set for you, like removing my logo and things like that. But I'm willing to do that when time permits. And uh, I think that was it. Lots of thanks. You're welcome. Nassau Bahamas. Hello. And that's all the questions I saw. All right. Yes, please. All right. I will do my best to get a template download. And I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll work with the page manager here for this page. And I'll see if he's willing to post that template download here for you guys to download. If not, um, then I'll put it up on my own page for you guys to download. All right. So with that said, cheers, everybody. Take care. Thanks for watching. And um, if you want to see more, I'm going to be on the Creative Cloud Facebook page in about 44 minutes. Sorry. Right. So I'll be there at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. And we'll be talking about Adobe Stock and the new features in Adobe Stock. So cheers, everybody. Um, can I make a color border? Well, you can make a color background. If you want to make a color border, you could do that as an identity plate. So there are tricks to it. All right. Cheers, everybody. Take care. Thanks for watching. And we will catch you on the next one. Goodbye, everybody.